Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the ring, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, Ahmad Chico. No one doubts that this young man is a very big puncher. There's, that's one of the things that everybody knows about him. The question, and, and everyone knows he likes to attack. The question is what will happen, and will he have the grit and determination to keep attacking if Vargas hits him with a big punch? That's really the question about Chico. And, and guys, he's managed by Camila Stefan, who also manages David Lemieux and Vermaine Stivern. He must see something in Chico to keep him in his camp. This guy doesn't waste time with bad fighters. There's something there. Yeah, and, and that's something, for the most part, is power and the ability to create excitement in a fight. He's a power puncher. He's the bigger man in this fight. But it's a 10-round fight, so how, how will we see him economize his power throughout this fight? One of the problems with Chico that you'll see, and that we've seen in the past, and that we've seen with other former kickboxers, is that they tend to waste a lot of energy and they have trouble keeping their hands up. That's been the problem for Chico. A lot of movement on his feet and not defensively responsible. Let's see if he can fix those things here tonight, because in a 10-round fight, it's a lot more difficult. And here comes his opponent. Fighting tonight out of the red corner, Samuel Vargas. Samuel Vargas is from Mississauga right here where the Hershey Center is situated. He comes by way of Columbia. He is also undefeated, 7-0-1 with one knockout. Both of them have a combined six knockouts. And we got to talk about the, the mental challenge when it comes to what we saw at the Wayans. How much of a mental game is played? How much can fighters stick to a game plan when there's this sort of bad blood out? Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, oftentimes when there is that much animosity going on, when you get a fight where both fighters are over trying, if you will, and it creates a messy fight. And that's the death. There's a lot of danger in that here, especially for Vargas, who seems to be the one initiating most of the interaction. We're gonna have to see if that is the case in the in the ring, if his actions play into uh, beginning that heatedness in this fight as well. He looks calm, he looks like he's taking a deep breath of uh, anxiety there as walking to the cage. Yeah, calmness not what we expect to see. You know, he, we saw him uh, in that draw with T-Bar Broch. Much has been made of the fact that Broch is one of their common opponents and Broch knocked out Chico in round one. And I think that's a lot of what Vargas is hanging his hat on here, that he He's going to win this fight. Oh, this is great stuff. He doesn't. Look at it. Does, Chico doesn't want him shaking hands with his corner man. Now that's classic. I haven't seen that one in a long time. But Vargas, I think, <laughs> likes to stir the pot as we get to our <laughs> official introductions from Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our co-main event, and it is being brought to you by Hennessy Sports in association with Interbox and United Promotions. It is sponsored by New Market Nissan, The Fight Network, and FY Inc. It is scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. Our three judges assigned are Harry Davis, Kelly Zolnierczak, and William Boudhu. Our referee in charge, the third man in the ring, will be Rocky Zolnierczak. Introducing to you first to my right, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing white trunks with gold and weighed in at 154 pounds. Fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, 
by way of his native country of Lebanon. He brings with him a professional record of six wins, three defeats, two draws, with five of his six wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Ahmad Chuko. And his opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing black trunks and weighed in at 151 and a half pounds. Fighting out of Mississauga, Ontario, by way of Bogota, Colombia. He is undefeated with seven wins, one draw and one win coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Samuel Borgas. Fighters to the center. Fighters. Okay, guys, I went over the instructions in the change rooms. I want you to obey my commands at all times. I expect a clean, professional boat. Touch gloves. Come up. Some luminaries in each corner. Samuel Vargas, of course, as you take a look at the tail of the tape, age is a big difference here, Corey. Yeah, it is. And it, it, it's also uh, noteworthy that Vargas is fighting above 147, where he's most comfortable. That could mean that he had an easier time making weight. It can be an advantage. It can be a disadvantage. So this one's set to go. We're talking about the luminaries, the Canadian kid Steve Molitor in the corner of Samuel Vargas and Otis Grant in the corner of Ahmad Chico. Two fighters who have uh, done extremely well in different eras. And you know, it's fascinating that we have the continuation of the, uh, the rivalry, the provincial rivalry, but it's kind of interesting, a, Le a Lebanese fighter representing Quebec and a fighter from Colombia That's representing right. <laughs> Ontario. So they do this by way of the world. Well, Canada's about wow. diversity. Look at, look at Chico rip those hooks and blast Vargas early. He's throwing big leather right now. And Man. Samuel Vargas is eating it. That was a big shot right there on the left. Oh, wow. He's getting caught again. Big shots. And Vargas looking to continue there. The referee will separate them. But boy, Vargas perhaps in trouble early. We talked about the power of Chico, and there's no question he has it. Maybe he awoke the sleeping bull, so to speak, with his antics. We'll I think see. Vargas is making a tactical mistake. He's squaring himself up and saying, I'm going to stand in front of you and I'm going to bang. Big mistake early against Chico, in my opinion. And Vargas has the legs to box. I yes. think initially, as his initial instincts are to box. Yes. He's I, fighting against them. I think it's because of the animosity. He wants to stand there and fight Chico. And look at, oh my! Maybe it wasn't a mistake. There you have it. Chico is on the ground, and he looks to be okay, but he was wincing in pain when he fell to the ground. But he's okay. It looks like he's, he's not happy with that knockdown. I'm not sure what kind of punch that was. He's, he's, coming, he's coming back swinging. He is, oh, yes. Oh. He wants to make a point that that knockdown was a fluke in his mind. Man. You know, initially I thought he had hurt his hand, but now I'm thinking it might have been a body shot. Yeah. It looked like he was cradling one of his ribs when he was on the way to the canvas, but nevertheless, this is wow. getting heated with every punch. I'll tell you, great work to the body by Chico after Vargas had whacked him. Can you say round of the year? Wow. We're certainly on pace for that as we got 30 seconds left. Chico has hit the canvas once after we thought that Vargas would hit the canvas earlier in the round. The people that know Chico say these are the moments that you have to ask yourself about with him. When he's on top of things, they expect him to do well, but when things go not so well, can he pull it together? And this was a round he would have otherwise clearly won. Yes. A little bit of a technical note here, guys. He seems to be switching stances as well. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure if that matters at this point. But effectively. Wow, was that a great first round. Absolutely fantastic. I guess uh, Vargas claims the round on account of the knockdown. 
But you can make the case that's a 10-9 round for Vargas because, because Chico did so many good things. We look at it again. And this is... This is when Chico, early in the, mat, the round, was landing those big hooks and right hands and had Vargas in some difficulty. Great double left hook by Chico. His aggression was excellent, and that was where he went down. And maybe a right hand to the body. It was very hard to tell what happened there. But he came back strong. Tremendous round one. Men, both men landing major shots. Chico doesn't throw anything to find range or anything no. of the sort. He, he's looking for a knockout every time he lets his hands go. And the word jab was not in his lexicon no. in that round. <laughs> we continue on in round number two. Are you guys surprised at all that he recovered so fast from that body shot? Yes. Whatever it was, he recovered immediately. He almost didn't make the count. And he just landed a good straight right hand to the head of Vargas. Vargas, one of his provocative statements was, he better be chewing some gum to strengthen that glass chin of his. Well, the punch that put him down was probably a body shot. Well, so far, guys, this fight has definitely lived up to the words that were said before this fight. Yep. As they continue a frantic pace in round number two, this one's scheduled for 10. And I don't think it's going 10. Well, and you know, you made the point, Ardo, that he's changing, uh, that Chico is changing his stance from lefty to righty a lot, but it's been effective for the most part. Here comes Vargas. There now it's 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 in fact Chico that's against the ropes. A, a difference from round number one. Yeah, good work on the inside by Vargas, and it's good that he's in there because Chico can't extend on those knockout punches he's trying to throw. Now Chico moving back a little bit more in this round, and of course that's not when he's at his most effective, but he's still counter punching off those ropes. It was almost like Vargas was trying to time his uppercut there as good. Chico's to Chico's movements. Good defense by Chico against the rope stone. He's coming back with counter left hand, so he's got his wits about him right now. Well, Chico is slipping exclusively to his left right now. If Vargas would take a step to his right, he might have a lane for that right hand. Yep. Oh, my. Big shot there. A big left. Chico goes to a neutral corner. Vargas is down. He will answer the count. That was a big shot, though. And now we're one apiece in terms of knockdowns. <laughs> and Chico just tries to go as fast as possible, just like he did when he was knocked down. And he continues with the pace, and Vargas looks like he may be hurt here. And he's landing a couple shots, body shots, head shots. Chico swinging wildly. Chico's not thinking defense. Even though Vargas is hurt, there's the danger of him getting hit with a counterpunch. Big shot there, almost lands right on the face of Vargas. As the referee separates both fighters, a little warning for Vargas there. Maybe for a couple of low blows or attempts. Nevertheless, Chico continuing to press the action. And this, <laughs> save, maybe saved by the bell, maybe a little bit of an exaggeration, but still Vargas was feeling the pressure at the end of that round. Vargas had some assistance from Rocky Solnercheck there as well. Uh, that warning came at a rather opportune time. As we look at the highlights, Al, what, how do you score this round? Well, this was an, this is going to be a Chico round, obviously, but Vargas doing some work early. Now, he pinned him against the rope, but didn't land a lot. And there was a lot of good slipping coming from Chico. And then Chico, you see this is foreshadowing of what's to come. He's landing some very good left hooks. And things would turn on this left hook. And he moved to the orthodox stance to throw that hook where he got a little more leverage than he has as a lefty. Sam Vargas got through a very difficult second round. And really the opposite of what we saw in the first round where a round that Vargas would have otherwise clearly won lost because of the knockdown. The, the only thing that was pretty much the same in both rounds was whoever was knocked down, Chico was the aggressor when the fight yeah. resumed. 
Yeah, precisely. And I would be tempted to make that a 10-8 round for Tico because he controlled more of it than did uh, Vargas in the first round where it might have been a 10-9. Now it's Chico getting the warning from referee. Rocky's old near check. The action is still fast and furious in this one, and a lot of shots are landing. Vargas Both guys are not afraid at all. Sorry, Ardo. Vargas does not have an answer for the double left hook from Chico. When Chico doubles with the hook, he just can't miss. Wow. You were talking about round of the year. This may be fight of the year in Ontario anyway. Uh, in any place. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. And Vargas's right eye is closing fast. Just over the past 20 seconds, that eye is really shutting. It's tough for him to see those double left hooks as that continues. You know, if I was um, Chico, I wouldn't fight as a lefty. I would fight as a righty and get leverage on those left hooks because I don't think he's seeing them. Vargas tries to pepper Chico, who's on the ropes. He's calling that he got headbutted there, but the action continues. Chico looking for a power counter shot. Yeah, that's a strategic error by Chico. Don't fight as a lefty and don't languish on the rope. This is only the third round, folks. Wow. Uh, this fight is at an of a flow like few you'll ever see. The sweat is flying off their bodies as if this was the ninth or tenth round. Amazing. Well, they've landed enough punches for it to be the ninth or tenth round. With those vision problems, guys, it's good for Vargas to be on the inside as much as he can so he can feel those shots coming, even if he can't see them. You know, if I'm in Chico's corner, I'd tell him, just crank left hook. Stand there and double your hook as many times as you can. There's a nice left uppercut. There's the double left hook. That's the one, that's the money shot for Chico. You can see a mouse forming underneath the left eye, or right eye, pardon me, of Samuel Vargas. In fact, it might be both. Well, regardless of any tactics we've been talking about, you cannot discount the heart both men oh. are showing in this fight. They are they are showing heart, skill, and tremendous power. It's the final seconds of round number three. And you can see some blood forming, I believe, that the source is Vargas. I, I gotta ask, Al, I mean, yeah, we've seen some animosity between these guys, but after a fight like this, how can you not respect your opponent? Well, you should, and more often than not, you do see fighters show respect afterwards, but the end of this fight's a little ways away. Right now, these guys are in the middle of a firestorm. Yeah, it doesn't always work that way. Don't ask Eric Morales about Marco Antonio Barrera. Yeah, that's true. Now, this, this is where the double left hooks of Chico were so effective. And Vargas coming back with some strong right hands himself. This was a great exchange by both fighters. When Vargas is able to push Chico against the rope, he's pretty effective. Especially when Chico turns to the left-handed stance. But in this instance, Chico was able to land some counter punches. How do you score that round, Al? I'm going to give that round to Chico. Ten to nine. It's first, you know, that was first round without a knockdown in this fight. We were talking earlier about uh, George Chavallo. He's in the front row right now watching this fight with express interest, uh, as many are in this building. If you can't watch this fight with express interest, you, know, you can't watch a fight with interest. <clears throat> Huge shot there by Chico. I think Vargas oh, can big shot him. landed there by Vargas. Sorry, Corey. No, I, I think he can walk him down if he wants, but he keeps getting baited into these exchanges. Wow. Huge shots by Chico, landed head, body. Those double left hooks at Chico are wicked, are wicked. I mean, he throws them with great leverage. And I mean, every time he does, I'm shocked that Vargas doesn't go down when he's hit with them. Vargas now oh. trying to throw some shots, trying to send a response to Chico, but Chico still with the big power. Nice shot there right to the nose of Chico by Vargas. You know, Vargas thought 
because of he, he thought the first time he hit Chico really hard, he was going down. That's now, he right. did get him down. He didn't think this fighter would have this kind of resiliency against him. And now if I'm Vargas in that same token, do I go more to the body? Do I sense a weakness there? Well, you know, he hasn't been able to go downstairs again anymore. You're right. He has thrown some body punches, but... This is where I think Vargas needs to be, guys. Right on top of his chest. Every time Chico shows a flurry of punches that startles Vargas, Vargas has Chico against the ropes like this, just peppering shots, and it looks like Chico's almost sitting on that third rope there. And there he goes down, he catches him, and Vargas jacked up as is the crowd, and Chico is down, will he make the count? For the second time in this fight, Chico is down, and now it's Vargas yelling at Chico as he walks towards him again. And now Chico applying the hug, trying to keep the distance as close as possible. He looks dazed, Al. Yeah, that was a good idea to hold on. But he's still landing hooks. Still shots being landed. Down again goes Chico. You may have to see, no, the referee is not this bout he's allowing Chico the opportunity to get up now I did just hear a bell that does signal the end of the round my goodness what a round <laughs> I, I apologize for the relative silence over the past 45 seconds guys but there's not much to say that the imagery isn't saying all on its own as if we could have gotten a more action-packed round. Take a look at the highlights. Well, you know, it looked like uh, Chico was playing possum a little bit here. He's done this before, but I think it was those bo that body shot there that really started to hurt him. And ultimately, I believe, look, he comes out with a big left hook for that right to the body. Those right hands to the body by Vargas were the ones that were making the difference. And then a right hand to the head started him down, and he would hit the canvas for the first time in that round. And then Vargas would make it happen again with another right hand. So can this one minute revive Chico enough? If I'm Chico, I walk to the center of the ring, I crank up three or four left hooks and try to hurt Vargas early in this round. Let's see if that's exactly what he does. And yes, I think he just heard you, Al, and he's doing exactly that, or he's trying to keep that pace that he has at the beginning of each round. And if I'm Vargas, I, I, I'm pushing that pace because he's not a concussive one-punch knockout puncher. So right. he, it, it's been volume that's put Chico down both times. But it's clear that when he does throw and when he does land, Chico is susceptible. And you know, it's interesting, Chico going to the jab and movement. Don't switch to lefty. Every time he switches to lefty, he gets in trouble in this fight, Chico. Chico trying to box and buy time, and actually showing a very good, strong jab. We're about at the halfway point of this fight, gentlemen, and this has been an absolute war between Samuel Vargas and Ahmad Chico. And Vargas, again, this is how he scored his first two knockdowns, by keeping Chico on the ropes, And but it looks like Chico's countering more now. Well, he's back in that old trap. The trick he's got of trying to ram the straight left hand from a lefty stance when he's on the rope. That's the mistake he's making. The left hand hurts him more when it's like this in the middle of right. the ring as a double left hand. And oh. number two, as a southpaw on the ropes, he's susceptible to the straight right that's yes. put him down twice. And he loses power. And so it's a tactical error that's really hurting Chico. And look, he's doing it again. It's only round five. There's ten rounds. Is there any possibility that Vargas with the volume of punches? Well, as he goes down there, he does go down to the knee. That will count as a knockdown. A push. Or no, it's no, a, push. it's a push. push. In fact, it will not count as a knockdown. Well, it, does Vargas uh, run the risk of tiring himself out? Well, this pace has been fought at such a ridiculous pace. Either man could be in that situation. Oh, uh, my.
Chico was forced against the ropes. He was wobbly, but there was enough, maybe a couple seconds there that he was able to regain his composure as Vargas tries to apply the pressure. Nice shot there. A nice left hook by Chico. Lands flush. You know, I don't want to criticize the official there, but Rocky Zolnicek gave yep. Chico a chance to recover. You're absolutely right. He stepped in in a spot where he thought there was going to be a knockdown, and there wasn't. And you're right. He gave Chico a chance. More peppering shots, and down goes Chico for the fourth time in this fight. But he's looking at his corner almost as if he's getting instructions. He will wait, and he will stand up. He will be able to continue this fight. And there's 10 seconds left in this round. Will Vargas be able to score another knockdown? Oh, nice shot there by Chico. It seems like every time he goes down, he's got an answer. Wow. It almost seems like Chico is throwing more powerful shots, but Vargas by volume is able to floor Chico. That's the name of Sammy Vargas' game. You know, the first and only time Sammy Vargas was on American television was on ESPN. He fought Michael Springer, and people criticized him for being boring. <laughs> Look at these results what? now. Look at the highlights. Sammy Vargas turned himself into a volume puncher, and it's the volume that Chico cannot keep up with at this point in the fight. And that was where Chico made one of those strategic errors, even though he lands and the straight left. That's it, fellas. The fight has been called off. Samuel Vargas celebrates in victory. The corner will not let Ahmad Chico continue, and there's a hug. How can you not respect your opponent after a fight like that? You have to. I don't think Chico's too happy about the way it ended, but uh, at this juncture, both men showed such amazing heart and grit. Uh, now, I saw, I just saw Chico point to his hand. I don't know if he's going to say his left hand was hurt. In any case, the bottom line is this man, Samuel Vargas, came back from what looked to be disaster for him and was able to floor Chico four times in this fight. Yeah, we're uh, seeing some conversations happening in the corner of Ahmad Chico. I, I think you're right, Al. I think it may be his left hand that might be injured, rendering him unable to continue. And that's a shame if that's the case, although certainly he was in some trouble uh, in any case in the previous round. It seemed like by volume, Vargas was able to knock down Chico at one point twice in one round. And Vargas hit the canvas in this fight and rallied back. You know, we, we talked about at the beginning some of the defensive liabilities of that man, Samuel Vargas. They are issues that are going to need to be addressed because he was able, he was hit with a lot of big shots in this fight. But what's encouraging to him is A, the grit he showed to come back, and B, uh, as Corey said, he's turned himself into a volume puncher who, who uses his offense as a good defense. But he's still going to have to tighten up that defense. Thomas Triber has our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after five completed rounds of boxing, the blue corner is unable to continue due to a injury to his left hand. Therefore, your winner, by way of technical knockout and still undefeated, Samuel Vargas. Left hand, and, and we saw a lot of sportsmanship there, a lot of conversation between the two as the decision was and being ladies rendered. and gentlemen, how about a yeah. big round of applause for Ahmad Chico? You know, I, I think that uh, while, you know, some may say, oh, you know, a dip, or, the injured hand was maybe an excuse for him. I don't believe that because Chico was really showing great grit. What a great fight. Corey Erdman's in the ring. He's got Samuel Vargas, our winner. Corey Erdman here with Sammy Vargas, and Sammy, you said you would steal the show. Your promoter said you would steal the show, and you did it. Well, I was, I was, you know, like my main, my main goal is to please the fan here. I love you guys. We couldn't do, we couldn't do this without you all. So, you know, I try, I try my best. There was certainly no respect between you guys at the press conference. Is there a level of respect now between you two now that you've been through a war like that? No, you know, uh, I feel I always I would respect him as a fighter and as a person. I actually met him before all this, 
he's a, he's a good guy, he's a nice guy, so it was just, it was just something I felt like doing during the way, and so, you know, I, I did it. I know the two things have been on your mind. One thing has been on your mind, and that's the rematch with Tibor Broch. But since this ended in a TKO because of a hand injury, would you like a rematch with Chico before you move on? Uh, with with Chico? Yeah. Would, would you Would you like a rematch of this bout? Oh uh, no. I mean, I uh, you know I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not the one to pick my my, my, my opponents. That's a promoter's job, and you know I'm here to learn. As you as you guys see. I, learned, I don't have a, an extensive amateur record, so I'm here to learn. I don't care who put, they put in front of me. So I'm just here to work and learn. On behalf of the commentary team and everyone here, thank you so much for the fight, Sammy. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all my people, my Colombian fans, my Latinos. We did it, baby. Everybody, I love you guys. FYA, thank you. Lee Baxter, thank you. Uh, Vision Fitness, thank you. Uh, Huff Jim, thank you. Hennessy Sports, I love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy. Sammy Vargas, your winner. Arda now, back to you.